Let's take a look at the 1987 free response question from the mechanics portion of the APC exam. Uh, question three, um, we had a, uh, a one kilogram object moving horizontally with a velocity 10 meters per second as shown above when it makes a glancing collision. So it just catches it. Oh, probably should have drawn that more like that because it was glancing, glancing. Just kind of catches the edge of that a little bit, glancing. Um, what makes a glancing collision with the lower end of the bar that was hanging vertically at rest before the collision? For the system consisting of the object, boink, and the bar, linear momentum is not conserved in this collision, but kinetic energy is conserved. Now, the question is, why is linear, why did they say that? Why is linear momentum not conserved? You need to understand that in this case. Why is linear momentum not conserved if the system is the bar and uh, the object? Well, it's because the bar it has a, there's going to be a, an unbalanced force on the system. The bar is basically attached to the earth, right? It's attached to this thing here, which is attached to a ceiling or something, which is attached to a building, and the building's in the earth. So basically, uh, momentum's not, yeah, con in this system, momentum's not conserved. We would have to include the earth, the whole building and the earth and everything. And uh, in, that, in that case, we really couldn't solve anything. We couldn't get any useful information out of there if we included the earth in the system, because the earth's too massive. It doesn't react in any significant way that we could uh, measure. So, uh, Linear momentum is not conserved. This is not an isolated system uh, because they said it was just the bar and the object. Um, but why is uh, angular momentum conserved? And when is it conserved, right? Um, so right now, uh, there is no net torque on the system. And as long as this is a low friction hinge, uh, when it hits, uh, there's gonna be no torque uh, about the hinge. There's going to be no torque about the hinge, uh, uh, or no net torque on the system. So uh, now, once it starts raising, it will, there will be, there will be a net torque. Gravity will be applying a torque uh, to this. Uh, but right at the point of the collision, angular momentum right before uh, will equal angular momentum right after. Now, once it gets up here, uh, angular momentum has, wasn't conserved all the way to there. So I'm going to give ourselves, we, we need to define some points in time in this problem. Um, so I'm going to say, now I would like to draw more pictures, but uh, I'm going to run out of board space. I always do. I got a little board here at Extreme Physics Central. And uh, so uh, I'm going to say, uh, so uh, time, here's our little times. So zero is uh, right before collision. One is right after, right after collision, right after. One is right after, all right? Uh, nothing has moved significantly yet, right? The bar is, has gained uh, some rotational velocity and uh, the, uh, the ball will have uh, uh, slowed down a bit and will change its direction a bit, um, but they haven't moved significantly. They're basically still right here. And two is uh, when bar at 90 degrees, right? Right up there. So uh, this is two. Uh, right there would be one, and right there would be zero. The bar, which has a length L, which is 1.2 meters and a mass M of three kilograms, so it's three times the mass of the uh, object, is pivoted about the upper end immediately after the collision. The object moves with a speed v at an angle. Uh, oh, that should have been v. Why that should be here? That's v. V at an angle theta relative to the original direction. The bar swings freely after collision and reaches 90 degrees with respect to the vertical. The moment of inertia of the bar about the pivot is uh, ml squared over three. Ignore all friction. Determine the angular velocity of the bar immediately after the collision. Well. 
my, my first inclination might be, well, let's use angular momentum, right? So we would say uh, L0 equals L1. Uh, so the momentum of the system before equals the momentum of the system right after, which is true, by the way. Um, but the problem is, it would be we can't really calculate the angular momentum of the particle because we don't know theta, right? So that's not going to work out for us very well uh, to use that. So that's not going to work, even though angular momentum is conserved. But what will work is uh, conservation of mechanical energy after the collision. So after the collision, the bar starts here and swings all the way up. So it starts with a rotational kinetic energy and ends up with a gravitational potential energy. So uh, what I'm going to do is the bar now, uh, as far as where the bar is from a gravitational potential energy uh, standpoint, the bar is basically at the center of its mass, right? So the bar uh, is going to start off, and I guess I'll, I think I'll use red. The bar is going to start off at this position. You know, this is the center mass right here, right? So the bar starts there and center mass is there and it ends up there. So the bar ends up lifting up half its length. I don't know if I drew that half, but anyways, you get the idea, right? It, it rises up half its length, L over two. So I'm actually gonna define this as zero potential energy. I'm gonna say that's my zero gravitational potential energy at that position, and I'm going to solve this uh, using conservation of energy. So the energy for the bar at one equals the energy of the bar at two. One is right after the collision, two is when it gets up to 90 degrees. All right, well, initially the bar starts off, it just has rotational kinetic energy. Uh, so K rot one, and that there is no translational, uh, equals uh, gravitational potential energy at two. All right, so we have one half I omega one squared equals M G H at two. <coughs> All right. So uh, the uh, moment of inertia, <coughs> they said, was uh, ML squared over three. Uh, but our mass is 3M, so I'm going to say that's 3M L squared over three omega one squared equals uh, the mass in this case was this is the generic mass the actual mass was 3m 3mg and the height that it rose to was l over two all right uh, let's see threes go away um, we can make that go away we can make our mass go away we can make one of the l's go away uh, it's so gratifying. I really like doing that. I really like crossing things out without actually doing a calculation. Omega 1 squared equals 3G over L. All right, so therefore, omega 1 equals uh, square root of 3G over L. And let's see, do the units, we got meters per second squared divided by meters is per second squared per second. Um, but okay, yeah, units work out good because we have meters per second squared divided by meters. That's per second squared. So uh, I take the square root of that, and that's uh, per second, and uh, the radian is implied. So that's good. Units work out. Let's plug our numbers in. They said we can use 10 for G, so I'm going to do that. 10 meters per second squared divided by 1.2 meters is 5 radians per second. 5 radians per second. Omega 1 is 5. 5 radians per second. Determine the uh, speed V of the 1 kilogram object immediately after the collision. All right, so in the problem, they said that kinetic energy is conserved. So this was a, an elastic collision. All right, well, that makes it easy. If kinetic energy is conserved, uh, that means the kinetic energy, so this is of the system now. Now we're going to look at the system of the bar and the object. So uh, the kinetic energy at, uh, of the system of zero equals the kinetic energy of the system at one. Initially, we just have uh, the kinetic energy of the object, one half mb zero squared. 
translational kinetic energy, and it has a translational kinetic energy afterwards, which is going to be one half m v. Uh, I'm going to call it v one squared. Uh, they just call it v. Uh, we just need to know that v one is same as v plus. Uh, one half i omega one squared of the bar. Uh, conveniently, we just found that, um, so that's nice. Uh, I can get rid of the one half right off the bat. Um, now we get we have to be careful with our masses here. V zero squared equals uh, this is m. This is the particle, and this is uh, one half uh, i is m, which is three m in this case. L squared over 3 uh, omega 1 squared, uh, which is going to be uh, 5 radians per second squared. I'm going to put that number in there just because that's all I have. I would have, oh, I think it was, uh, what was it? The square root of 3G over L, wasn't it? Square root of 3G. Let's do that. I like to, let's keep it as letters because we're going to, we need to know how to do that. Stinking numbers, right? So this is going to be a 3G over L, right? Because omega, uh, I believe, was square root of 3G over L, so this would be three, uh, 3G over L if I square it, right? That's omega squared. All right, so our masses, our M's can go away as 3's can go away. And uh, what are we solving for? We want to know the speed. We want to know V1. So what do we have? We have V0 squared minus... Uh, one of those else can go away. Uh, 3GL. Just 3GL? Yeah, 3GL. Yeah. 3GL equals v1 squared. All right, so v1 then equals the square root of uh, 100 meters squared per second squared, because that's 10 meters per second, minus 3 times 10 meters per second squared times L, which is 1.2 meters. Uh, that equals v1. Just took the square root of that. I got 8 meters per second. All right, so I guess that's B. Uh, v equals 8 meters per second. They just called it V. They just called it V. I called it V1 because uh, I wanted to keep track of time. Uh, do, 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 do. Determine the magnitude of the angular momentum of the object about the pivot. Just before the collision. What was the angular momentum before the collision? Well, that seems easy enough. What's the ag uh, uh, angular momentum of the object about the pivot? All right, angular momentum is uh, R cross P about the pivot. That's not a good one. Let's use a different marker. All right, in this case, uh, I'm going to use... Uh, so this is pretty easy because R is this way. And P is that they are at right angles, so we just need to multiply R as L times uh, MV. So L is uh, 1.2 meters, and M is 1 kilogram, and V is 10 meters per second. Uh, so what is that? 12 uh, kilogram meters squared per second is the angular momentum. Uh, before the angular momentum at zero is 12 kilogram meters squared per second and it is R cross P it is out of the board it's towards you right coming right at you coming right at you all right but there's the magnitude coming right at you. I'll, I'll put a dot there it's coming out of, out of the board there we go dot convention all right so and what do we have one more left determine the angle theta all right how are we gonna find that how are we going to find the angle theta? I think we're going to use conservation of angular momentum. All right. So the momentum of the system, zero, equals the momentum of the system at one. We already know that one. So let's set up uh, L1. All right. So we got the momentum of the of this thing, which is going to be, it's R cross P, right? So 
Uh, R is this way. I'm just going to say R, and I'm going to find uh, the perpendicular component of P. So uh, this is the uh, perpendicular component of P right here. Uh, go in red. So this velocity vector has a component. Right, that's the only component we're interested in, is the right angle one. So this is uh, velocity perpendicular, and there's uh, velocity parallel, but we don't care about that for that. But anyways, these two add up to be that, and we want care about that. So we're going to say R times P perpendicular really is what we're going to do. We're going to go R P perpendicular uh, plus uh, I omega 1 uh, and this is of the bar about the uh, uh, about the pivot. All right, so uh, R is uh, well, I'll call it L, and uh, this is uh, v v one times the cosine of theta. That'll give me v perpendicular times m, and then plus. 3ml squared over 3, moment of inertia, times omega 1, uh, which was, what did we say omega 1 was? I like to use my letters again. Omega 1 was uh, square root of 3g over L. All right, that's what I found by my omega. And uh, that equals uh, m v0 l right and v0 l okay our, our momentum is everything all right there we go all right so we can uh, slash and burn let's slash and burn uh l go away threes go away let me just clean this up a little bit. Make sure I don't make any sloppy mistakes. Plus, uh, I'm going to bring the L inside. That's going to be, uh, so this is going to be square root of 3GL. When I bring the L inside, it becomes L squared. L squared over L is just L. And I end up with that, I think. And then, uh, so I end up with V0 minus the square root of 3GL uh, divided by V1. Uh, inverse cosine equals theta. All right, so we got the inverse cosine of, we get 60 degrees. 60 degrees, I guess, is the angle. So, theta equals 60 degrees, cosine of one half, 60 degrees. All right. What do we got? Determine the. All right, there we go. All right, not an easy problem, I would think. Um, a lot of places to get tripped up. Um, but anyways, I'll see you later. It's three.